Hi, and welcome to the Home Assistant How-To with Bearded Thinker. Today we will be playing with Microtik Router. We'll start in 10 seconds. Before we begin today's episode, I really would like to thank all the members who have joined my channel. Thank you very much, your support really means a lot. And now, let's get cracking with the video. Due to some technical difficulties, unfortunately, I had to redo my home network. My network was, a, let's call it like that, like a typical home network. It included the fiber optics coming to the home, so media converter. After the media converter, there was a router from the ISP. But I also added my own router. And then I had a glitch some kind of a network issue that required me to completely let's call it like that factory reset the isp router and then also redo my home network while i was doing that i got myself a new microtik router and exchanged my isp with that one the new microtik router is now used for the connection to the internet but also for my internal routing the good thing about the Microtik is that it has a lot of functionality that normally have high-end devices. That's why a lot of financial institutions, but also other ones, use it as a, let's call it like that, a second router in a branch office. And also a lot of companies use it as a remote branch router. It allows a lot of things regarding to the security, routing the traffic, VLANs, etc. I myself am definitely not using 99.9 .9 of that functionality, but for what I use it, it works great. So I have now my router set up, but I also wanted to see if I can pull the information inside Home Assistant. If you've checked Home Assistant website, then you've probably seen that there is already Microtik integration available from the integrations page, but this integration is used for device tracker. And I do not want additional device tracker, but I do want some more functionality from my Microtik router in Home Assistant. And this is where the HACS component comes in. Today we will be installing this component. Installation itself is pretty straightforward. We then have to create one specific account with a specific set of user privileges. And then we have to add it to Home Assistant. So let's get started. First thing we have to do is we have to go to HACS or Home Assistant Community Store. Let's go to Integrations, click on a plus sign and search here for Microtik Router. Let's install it. We'll be installing the latest version. And now we have to restart our Home Assistant. Let's go to Configuration, Server Control, Check Configuration, and let's restart. If you search in the Integrations page inside Home Assistant website, you will find Microtik integration. But this Microtik platform integration inside Home Assistant offers only presence detection. This one, available through HACS, offers much, much more. Let's wait for this custom component to be installed. If we go to Configuration, Integrations, and click here on the plus sign, this is the one integration we will be using. But before we can proceed, we have to go to our Microtik or Microtik and configure their specific user for this purpose. Next step for us is to create a specific user that we will be using inside this integration. Let's go to System, Users, and create new user. Let's give it a name, YouTube BT. Let's get some passwords here. And comment. And let's click here apply mind you we will have to change the group here but since we do not have group already prepared for our integration we will for now leave this as group full apply and okay 
So we have here this new user that is member of the full group. Let's now create a new group. We'll call it YouTube group. And we have to select a couple of permissions. We need read, write, API, and where is it? Test. I'll leave also comment. And let's click apply. Okay, let's go back to users, double click this one and select this. Apply. So we now have this user that is member of this group. If you want to further enhance security for this user, what you can do here, you can specify the IP address range or the IP address from where this user can access this router. Okay, let's go back to Home Assistant. In Home Assistant, let's press on plus sign, micro, select this MikroTik router, type here the IP address of your router, type here the username you just created, password, and you can leave port as is. Of course, if you use SSL, you can use SSL here. Let me just fix the name and let's press submit. As you can see, this is the information. Home Assistant is now pulling from my MikroTik router. I will not be selecting any area and I'll just press here finish. This was really easy, it's easy to set up, but the question is what you can now do with this information. Let's go to the devices and type here MikroTik. First couple of devices, these are the Ethernet ports. My MikroTik router has five ports, of which one is usually one port, where I connect it to the internet, and four other ports are internal. This is my ISCON internet, my internet service provider. Here I have NAT, network allocation table or something like that. This is the PPOE or PPP over Ethernet, my one connection also. This is the basic information about the system and these two are my wireless LAN. So to see what we have here, let's start adding them to the user interface. For each port, you get the name of the port, and you also have RX and TX, receive and transmit. As you can see, this is the speed. Let me add it to Lovelace. Mm, let's, 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 let's add it to fun stuff. We now have one external port. For the sake of the video, I'll add four more ports. Let me quickly do that. This is the information about my internet service provider. But as you can see here now, I have option or switch where I can turn this port on or off. This is not a real port. Let's call it like that. It's a virtual port where my internet is located. Next, I have my NAT. And NAT is what some other routers call port forwarding. This is used to translate traffic between incoming external traffic and a specific port on a specific IP address for internal traffic. Let's add this from my test system. Then we have this one, which is also my WAN or my external connection. I will not be adding it. But I will be adding this one. This is the information about my router. CPU load, is there a new firmware or not, internal HDD or internal memory, and internal RAM. I do not have information about temperature. And I will also be adding one VLAN or wireless LAN, but I do not have any devices currently connected to it. 
Now let's look what we have here. And let's check now devices that we just added. Overview. Notice something different here. Yes, I moved everything to network tab. And here are devices we just added. So we have Ethernet ports from 1 to 5. We have status of my MicroTik router. We have information about the wireless LAN. We have information about my internet connection. And we also have our NAT ports. So what are the things that you can do with all this information in Home Assistant? It really depends on your installation, your network, and for what you are using this MicroTik router. One of the things is that you can automate your NAT rules. For example, I'm using here ports 443 and port 80 so that my Synology can renew its SSL certificate. But these two ports are only needed when SSL certificate is about to expire. Because I think it's 7 days or 10 days before the certificate expires, Synology makes a request to let's encrypt and tries to renew the certificate. In the period where certificate is valid, those two ports are not needed. So one of the automations I could do is A. Check if the validity of certificate is more than 10 days. If the certificate is valid for more than 10 days, I could use automation to turn those two NAT rules off. And the second automation could be used to check if the certificate is valid for 10 days or less. And if that rule is met, I could have this rule turned on. That way I could use this integration to, let's call it like that, further enhance security of my system. For each of those ports, for each of those entities, of course, you have some additional information. For example, let's look at this Ethernet 5 port. For the Ethernet 5 port, I only have one device that is directly connected to it. So you have here the IP address of the device, plus also the client MAC address. But some other ports have more devices connected, and then you see the information that there are multiple IP addresses with the multiple MAC addresses. As I said, you can also use this information either to further secure a network, or for example, if you have only one device, you can use this to track if the device is turned on or off. Next thing that you can play with is, of course, this one. You can track if there are devices connected to it or not. I'm currently not using this wireless network, but if I were to use it, I could then track if the traffic is coming to it or not and maybe check some devices that are connected to it if it's not working. And this is it for this very short Home Assistant how-to with Bearded Tinker. If you have any idea on what I could automate in my configuration, or for example for what you are using automations for this integration, please drop me a line in the Discord or leave it down in the comment section below. If you have any kind of a comment or a question in regard to this video or any other video I recorded previously, you can leave it always down in the comment section, but you can also find me on the Discord server. If you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified on the future updates, and I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun!